I, I feel like if, if we were all actually doing all of our New Year's resolutions every year, like we would all be like Superman right <laughs> Unstoppable now. Unstoppable by this point. We'd have flying cars and free health care. It would be easy. If you look up like what a pound of fat looks like, look at that. Look at what a pound of fat looks like. Whiskers. Whiskers. <laughs> Welcome back to the Adventurous Spirit Podcast. We are starting this year off right. That's right. We are your hosts. I am Chris Raboyne, and this is my partner who's oh so swell, my partner and co-host, my wife, Noelle. Hey, yeah. what's up, everybody? I couldn't help but notice your uh, very large hat. Yeah, just wanted to start this year off on the right foot, and uh, it'll be coming around later in the show today, so stick around to find out. <laughs> So welcome back and welcome to 2024. Here we go. Here we are. Start. We're here right now. Let's do this. We're so glad you tuned in. Make sure to hit that subscribe button on wherever you like to consume your podcasts because we are bringing you a brand new show every Wednesday. So join the family, embrace your adventurous spirit, and follow along. You can follow us over on social media at The Adventurous Spirit because we have yet another amazing show lined up for you today. Noel, what do we have to kick off the New Year Forum? Well, we're starting off on the right foot. Right foot? Right foot. Right? We have a short and sweet show lined up for you today for our first episode of the year because it's hard to commit to too much right at the beginning. Am I right? right? Oh, yeah. We're starting off by getting a little witchy, the part of the show where I share with you a holistic health tip that helps support your mind, body, and spirit. Ayo. Then Cade will be closing out today's show with Cade's Craft Corner, where our youngest son shows you how to make a fun craft you can make right at home. But first, (laughs) do you smell that? My milkshakes. What's burning? What's burning? What's burning? The part of the show where we discuss hot topics and burning questions. And today we're going to be talking about New Year's resolutions, statistics, and what people are trying to call in in 2024. Yeah, the, the, the resolutioners. I mean, are you still out there? Are we still doing this? Well, according to this Forbes article, most of us are. In fact, I think there's upwards of over 80% of people are making New Year's resolutions and excited about them. I mean, this is the time to be excited about them. But I feel like if, if we were all actually doing all of our New Year's resolutions every year, like we would all be like Superman right <laughs> Unstoppable now. Unstoppable by this point. We'd have flying cars and free health care. It would be easy. Well, okay. I take that back. So it's not 80% of people that are making them. However, out of all of the respondents, 80% of them feel confident in their ability to actually reach their New Year's resolution. Set the bar low. Just you know? set it low and you'll you'll get there. If you only want to clean out the attic this year, you probably get it done. And good for freaking you for doing that. But let's see what people are trying to call in in 2024 compared to years past. So again, according to this article by Forbes, more people are wanting to improve their physical and fitness this year, whereas last year people wanted to prioritize their mental health above their physical health. Right. So it looks like out of everybody who says that they want to make a New Year's resolution for this year, 48% want to improve their fitness. That's New Year's resolution numero uno it's okay. gotta be it's, i mean that's that's the the telltale resolution right i mean we used to go to the gym pretty religiously for a few years yeah and it was always that swell of the gym would just be 10 times more crowded from january till like march we call those the resolutioners you know it's true when you're a regular gym goer you're just you're preparing for that first week of january where you can't find a parking spot all of your favorite gym equipments are going to be used up by all the resolutioners but you know what I hope the gyms stay busy. I hope you stay committed to your New Year's resolution because you freaking deserve it, okay? It's just that fact of like most people just either can't fit it into their daily schedule for a full year or they just they just lose interest and that's just the way it is. Yeah, it's really hard to stay committed to like a fitness routine, especially when it requires you to leave your house and to go to the gym. Our fitness routine has changed over the years, but that's because we've made it adapt into our lifestyle to where we actually stay consistent with what we're doing. And you can master yourself in the gym, you can, but you can also really master yourself at home, which is what we have transitioned more into. And I have personally enjoyed a lot, lot more. And not feeling so overstimulated 
being at the gym, especially when it is crowded in January, it can just feel very overstimulating and overwhelming. But then coming in at number two, 38% of people who want to make a New Year's resolution this year are wanting to improve their finances. Who Who doesn't? doesn't? Yes, please. I'll take one of those. Uh, Then at number three, at 36%, improving your mental health, which we just said is it's great to mix that along with your fitness and it's just as important if not more important than your your physical health and then 34 percent said that they want to lose weight which i would never recommend being a goal like your goal should never be to lose weight because then all of a sudden we're putting emphasis on your weight and we're not taking into account everything else about yourself like your genetic makeup and how you feel. Do you feel good? Really, weight is just a number and it's going to be astronomically different from person to person. So I don't know. I get why this is on here because it is such a focus in our culture, but I also hate that it's on here because I wish people didn't think that that needs to be the goal. Yeah. I would say your resolution should be to throw away your scale. Yeah. If you start hyper-focusing on the number on the scale, it can be really, really discouraging. And damaging. If you're a big guy and you're working out and you're you're lifting weights, you're gaining muscle. You might feel like, oh, I'm doing so much, but you realize, oh, I've actually gained a pound. It's like, yeah, because muscle is way heavier than fat. So you yeah. so don't I was gonna stare say, at the scale. If you look up like what a pound of fat looks like, look at that. Look at what a pound of fat looks like. But then if you look at a pound of muscle, this shows a, a pen on this five pound fat blob. And then right next to it is a five pound muscle thing. It's a crazy, crazy difference. And this right here is exactly why you do not look at that number because you could have lost five pounds of fat, but gained five pounds of muscle. And now guess what? You look better, you feel better. But if you hyper-focus on the scale, you're going to be like, I haven't lost any weight. And it's like, BS, man. You've like put in the work, you've done it. You're looking great. Just keep going and throw that scale away. So here's an interesting statistic about New Year's resolutions for 2024 is that almost half of the people making them are making three or more New Year's resolutions for the year. And only 2.5% are committing to one. You guys are ambitious. I can't even think of one (laughs) I have right now. And then statistically, how long do resolutions last? This is one to really get into. So only 1% of resolutions last a full 12 months. There you go. One percent. The percentage is topping off at 22% at month two and month three, which you said, yeah, it usually kind of dwindles after March if, if committing to improvement of fitness is on your list. And let's not forget that technically New Year's is like not the beginning of the year. We are still very much in the dead of winter, which naturally we're just kind of as homo sapiens still in our um, like hibernation season. And it's not until spring, the spring equinox that the year actually starts where we're supposed to be like readying ourselves to do something like this. So it's definitely not a bad time to start thinking about what you would like to do, but you don't have to hit the ground running necessarily. Cause again, we're still in the middle of winter. Okay. Take care of yourself Take care of your immune system, but you don't have to put it into full gear just because it's January 1st. It's all baby steps. It's like, what what can I start chipping away at in 2024? You don't have to reinvent the wheel. You just have to start chipping away. Yeah. And then here's a helpful book recommendation for you. If you're just trying to figure out a way to like build habits, Atomic Habits, it's a great book. Um, The concept that we just mentioned a bit ago is actually called Habit Stacking, where you just like start one thing into your, into your daily life until it becomes a habit. Now you're going to add something else to it. So you're never overwhelming yourself. And then boom, you wake up a decade later and I've stacked a lot of really good habits in my life that help support my physical health, my mental health, and my spiritual health. So if you haven't read it yet, Atomic Habits, That would be a great New Year's resolution to um, add this book to your reading list this year. Now it's time to get a little witchy. Yeah. The part of the show where I share with you a holistic health tip that helps support your mind, body, and spirit. Ayo. Ayo. I've been a registered nurse for the last seven years. I have my bachelor's in nursing. I'm a self-taught yogi. 
I'm a neurolinguistic practitioner, a hypnotherapist, and a licensed coach. Jeez. It's kind of crazy. But even though I'm a licensed healthcare professional, I'm always looking for more of a holistic way of doing things. So I can imagine that there's probably quite a bit of you that feel like your abdominal muscles are weak, not super strong, makes a lot of things difficult. This could even extend into your pelvic floor. You might have a weak pelvic floor that's causing these weak abdominal muscles. And what this could look like for a lot of people is having some bladder issues, some um, endurance issues when it comes to exercising or not being able to perform a certain exercise. Speaking of New Year's resolutions, that could be a big reason why a lot of people are giving up because they experience a lot of pain when they perform an exercise. Yeah, especially in the midsection, you can do some real damage real fast. You have to make sure your core is strong because any movement that you're going to perform, any exercise that you're going to execute with precision, it's all going to be extending from your core. So you want that thing as strong as possible. Okay. Okay. So here's where you can get a little witchy and take things into your own hands at home by just performing these two simple breathing exercises. This is something that, again, you can add to your daily healthcare regimen, and it's only going to take you a few minutes. We're talking like less than five. So if you go back to a couple other um, of our little witchy segments, you can add dry brushing, salt to your water, and these two simple breathing exercises for less than 10 minutes a day. It's really not that hard. So to start strengthening your pelvic floor and your abdominal muscles, you can start out with breathing exercise number one. I like to start off with this one because guess what you get to do? What? You get to lay down. Hey. You get to lay down. Sign me up. So just lay down on the floor, on a yoga mat, on a blanket, and you're going to rotate your hips forward to make sure that the small of your back is flush with the floor. To make sure that you're going to perform this correctly, especially when you're first starting out, you can place both of your hands on your belly to make sure that you're going to be breathing correctly. You're going to be breathing from your diaphragm, which means that your belly is going to rise and fall with each breath that you take. Your chest should not be moving at all. It's all coming from your diaphragm and you're filling your entire belly with air. And with almost all breathing exercises, you're inhaling through your nose and you're blowing out through your mouth. A simple way to remember this is smell in the flowers and blow out the candles. So you're inhaling through your nose and when you exhale, you are imagining and envisioning that all of the air is being pushed down and through your pelvic floor. So keeping your eyes closed, focusing on your breath, you can just lay on your back like this for a few minutes. Let your belly rise and fall with your natural breath and imagine your air leaving your pelvic floor every time you exhale. Now, you can easily go into the second breathing exercise by just rolling over and getting on your hands and your knees. Hey, yo. <sighs> To start this one, you're going to completely relax your core. Let that belly fall, okay? Easy. Completely, completely relaxed. Then you're going to tighten your core. And while your core is tightened, you're going to breathe through it. Once again, smelling in those flowers and blowing out those candles. This should feel difficult. It should feel difficult to breathe through this when your core is tightened, but you're just going to keep it tightened for as long as possible before then allowing your belly to relax. So then you're just going to alternate relaxing and tightening for as long as you really can handle it. Both of these breathing exercises are like rep until failure. And so uh, what's important to note here is that you're not sucking in. You're not trying to just like suck in your belly but you are just tightening your core and breathing through it as much as possible. So if you add these two simple breathing exercises to your daily routine, you're going to strengthen your abdominal core and strengthen your pelvic floor. Did I rhyme? <sighs> did you? I think I did. You just earned that hat. Hey. So there's three major benefits to adding these two breathing exercises to your daily healthcare regimen, and they are reduce anxiety, because you're spending more time breathing, allowing more oxygen to flow through. You are strengthening your pelvic floor and abdominal muscles. And bonus for all the ladies, this will decrease the pain of your period cramps by like 80 to 100%. Yes. I promise you. 
it's actually kind of amazing. And the reason why I even started doing these breathing exercises, not only to strengthen my pelvic floor, but I was looking for anything to decrease my period cramps. And this worked. And it wasn't medication and it wasn't some hormonal treatment and it wasn't a surgery. It's not it was, witchcraft. No, it was just some it's simple breathing witchy. exercise. Just a little witchy. Yeah. It's not too, too crazy. So now it's time to head on over to Cade's Craft Corner, where our youngest son, Cade, is going to show you a fun craft that you can make at home. Let's go see what we're going to make up today. Welcome to Cade's Craft Corner. All right. So today in Cade's Craft Corner, we're going to be making some paper plate cat in the hat guys. This is a real simple craft. All you really need is a paper plate, different colored construction paper, glue, googly eyes if you have them, markers or colored pencils, whichever one works for you, and some scissors. Are you ready to get started? So we're starting out with some basic white paper and we're gonna cut out some really simple shapes. So with our white paper here, we're just gonna cut out, we're gonna make a real simple hat shape. We're gonna make the bottom of the hat and we're gonna make it nice and tall. The cat in the hat has a very tall hat. He does. Something like that. So Cade, why don't you go ahead and cut out that shape and I'll make the other one for mine. Be careful kids. Cutting out can be hard sometimes. Be very careful with scissors. Good tip, Cade. You want me to help you with that? Yeah. Sometimes you gotta play tag team. This shape doesn't have to be perfect because the hat is supposed to be a little floppy and a little weird looking, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. The cat in the hat, hat in the house. So we got the start of our hats. Now we need to do some stripes. Now the cat in the hat usually has red and white stripes. Do you want to do red and white? Or what color stripes do you want to put on your hat? Be whatever you want. Green and purple. Green and purple it is. Something like that. Does that look cool to you? I'm going to do purple stripes on mine. Okay, so now we just need to get some glue. Get those stripes on there. All we do is we take one of our strips, apply a generous amount of the glue stick. Let's see. So Kate, are you excited for a new year coming up? Yeah. What do you want to do this year? What's what's your number one thing? Well, we're going to go to Versa Studios, Legoland, and Disneyland. You want to go to Universal Studios, Legoland, and Disneyland this year? Yeah. That would be cool. And then you got a perfectly little striped hat. That will look great. Now that we've got our plate, what we're going to do is take a black marker and we're going to color in all the area on the outer ring. And just to make mine a little different, I think I'm going to color mine blue. And it doesn't have to be perfect, right? I think it's supposed to look like hair, so you don't have to worry about coloring it in too solid. You kind of want it to look a little hair-like. That's the cool thing about art is there's no wrong way I'm to do it. I'm done with my hair already. You gotta go all the way around, dude. You at least have to go all the way around. Otherwise, he'll be bald. We don't want that, right? Well, a cat has hair on their entire face. So we're just gonna connect our hair. Do, 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 do. And I connect my hair. Something like that. Let's see yours. Ooh, he's hairy. So now that we've got our hairy faces and we've got our hats, if you've got them, go ahead and use your googly eyes. You can use any size you want. I'm gonna use the big boys. And we're gonna glue these onto our plates. Let's go ahead and stick our hats up there too. Cat in the hat doesn't go anywhere without his hat, right? Oh boy, look at this guy. Now we can get a little creative and we can draw the rest of his face. So what shape does a cat's nose usually look like? A triangle. A triangle, right? A tri like an upside down triangle, huh? Perfect. And color it in. We also need some eyebrows, huh? I like to draw eyebrows kind of like this, where you go make a fat line and have it get skinnier, almost like a shooting star. You have a lot of expression in your eyebrows. Like people can tell what you're thinking. Like if I go like this, or like this, or like this. This is what my guy's feeling like right now. And I'm gonna draw a little mouth too. And what else do cats have on their faces that most people don't? Whiskers. Whiskers. So Cade's gonna draw on his whiskers and I'm gonna try something else with these guys. Okay, bug, you wanna show everybody the, your cat in the hat? Whoa, dude, that is so cool. Look how happy he is. I really like his smile and his eyebrows. Wanna see mine? So instead of drawing on whiskers, I actually put on pipe cleaners just to give him some little fuzzy guys. And he's got a purple hat and blue fur, because why not? We're talking about Dr. Seuss here. And there you go. That's a pretty easy uh, cat in the hat craft. Wouldn't you say, Cade? Yes. Should we go try to scare your brother with him? Let's go. So there you go. 
that was a simple craft, but it was fun. And I think you inspired him by buying that awesomely tall hat. Boo! Huh? We've reached the end of today's episode. But that never means the adventures do. Heck no. And we're excited to experience the year ahead with all of you. So make sure to hit that subscribe button and join the family at the Adventurous Spirit. And hit that notification bell so that you don't miss next week's episode. And remember, adventure is out there, so embrace your adventurous spirit. Happy New Year, everybody. We hope that you start off on the right foot right. See you in the next one. Bye. Bye.